it's amazing how stories and analogies can help us understand concepts. So as a precursor to the Open System Interconnect model, the OSI model, I wanted to talk with you for a few minutes about a story regarding how two devices or two entities could communicate with each other using the tale of two kings. I'd like you to imagine that King A wants to invite King B, who lives in a different kingdom, over to lunch. Now, do you suppose King A has to go out by himself and ride across the countryside to do the invitation personally? The answer probably is no. He's got a whole bunch of people that work for him. So in this story, King A is going to call for his scribe. Da -da -da -da, bring me my scribe. And the scribe is an entity that's providing some service to the king. In our story, the scribe is going to write down the words the king speaks, which is going to include the invitation to King B to come to lunch. And once the scribe has provided this service and written this information down, the scribe is way too high on the pecking order to have to go out himself to deliver the message. What the scribe is going to do, the scribe is going to call on the secret agent in Kingdom A, Mr. 007 himself, to go ahead and also provide some functionality. For example, 007 may provide encryption or compression or translation of that language or parts of it to make it more compatible with King B. And once the secret agent, 007, has done its work, it'll hand it over to the attorney, the lawyer, on King A's side. And the lawyer is responsible for the management and the affairs of King A, including communications between King A and other kings. So assuming the attorney says, OK, yes, I'm willing to let this message go, the lawyer gives a stamp of approval and hands it down to the middle manager. Now, the middle manager's job is to, based on the type of message that's being sent, is to perhaps send it reliably, or if it doesn't have to have a receipt that comes back unreliably, or if the message is just too big, the middle manager may decide to chop up the message and then label those messages. For example, this is part one of three, and two of three, and three of three. And when that middle manager has done its job, it's going to hand that message or messages, based on how it chopped them up, down to the mailroom. Now, we might think to ourselves, hmm, what does the mailroom do? Well, they handle mail. It's going to have a couple of addresses on it. It's going to have an address in the upper left. For example, that's the from address. It's a from kingdom A. And it's also very likely going to have a to address, for example, to Kingdom B, to King B specifically, at Kingdom B. So after the mailroom has added the appropriate labels to the message or messages, the mailroom then hands these over to the envelope stuffers. Now, one of the questions might be, which is the best type of envelope to use? And that would also depend on what type of carrier are we going to use? Are we using FedEx or UPS or USPS or some other delivery service? And so if we're going to be using FedEx, it's very likely we're going to use a FedEx envelope. So the envelope stuffers are placing the messages into the appropriate envelopes. And then our last step from Kingdom A's side is the actual FedEx truck that's going to take our message or messages and route them or deliver them to Kingdom B. Now, when these messages are delivered, in our example, it's by FedEx, the FedEx driver himself or herself doesn't just run up to King B, hey, here's some stuff for you. No, King B has the same complement of individuals and staff that King A had, including attorneys and secret agents and middle managers, and mail rooms, and envelope stuffers. So when the delivery happens by FedEx over at Kingdom B on the right, that information is processed from the bottom up, starting with the physical delivery of the messages, and then the envelope stuffers, which are now opening contents, and handing the results over to the mail room, who says, yep, this is our kingdom, it's the right address, who then hand the message up to the middle manager at King B's side, and the middle manager at King B side might be a little bit nervous. If it sees, oh my goodness, this is one of three. Where's two of three and three of three? It might hold on to that information until it receives part two of three and part three of three, reassemble all those together in one package, if you will, and then hand them up to the attorney. Then the attorney who manages the sessions and affairs for King B can decide whether or not we want to go ahead and continue processing these and accepting these messages. And if so, it hands it over to 007 on King B side. So on King A side, if 007 did features like encryption and compression on the receiving side, the 007 function would do things like decryption and decompression. And when 007 on the receiving side is done with his work, he can hand that up to the scribe. And then the scribe providing a service to King B would simply read off the message, which would say, King A would like to know if you'd like to go to lunch. And if King B replies, we're going to follow that same logical path from King B going all the way down his staff having the message delivered by FedEx, and then be received all the way up on King A's side until King A gets the reply. Now, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to take this story that we've gone through together, and I'd like you to share it with somebody, a friend or a colleague or coworker or loved one. Because by telling this story and remembering each of the staff members in the kingdoms, 
that's going to help a boatload as we take a deeper look into the concept of the OSI reference model and how two devices can communicate across a network. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.